Hey everyone, this is Shinky JRPGs. My name is Shinky, and this is where we talk about anything and everything JRPG. Today, I am going to tell you how I tackle my backlog and what games are on my 2024 bucket list. Before I get into it, however, I want to hear how you manage your backlog and what games you have planned to get through 2024. I'm just curious if it's kind of like how I do it or if it's something entirely different. Backlogs are intimidating, aren't they? Games are coming out one after the other, sometimes in rapid succession. End of January, I'm looking at you. Or games you might come across out in the wild and have wanted to play for years. So naturally you pick that up and it might go straight into the backlog or you put off playing something else and that game ends up in the backlog. Now think of doing that for the last 20 or 25 years and then you end up with a huge backlog and it can get incredibly overbearing. For me, every year, usually within about the first week of January, I'm a little late this year, I write out a list of games that I want to play throughout the year on my whiteboard. This way, once I finish a game, I have a list to work off of for what to play next. Of course, I probably won't play through every one of these games, and I know this, and that's okay. And I am also quite aware that there are several games coming out this year that I want to play, and will. Games like Ayudin Chronicle 100 Heroes, Visions of Mana, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth are absolutely high priority and will be played immediately. While there are also so many more games to be released that haven't even been announced yet. Anyways, get ready, ice your drink, pop your corn, and let's take a look at what games I'm planning on knocking out of my backlog throughout 2024. And of course, if you aren't subscribed yet, click subscribe, hit like, and let's get into it. So I wanted to start this list off with games that I plan on covering on the channel. First thing on my list is my Road to Visions of Mana series. So already this year, I have finished my Sword of Mana review. So check that out after you're done if that suits your fancy. Anyways, to continue, I will be playing the original Secret of Mana. Believe it or not, despite Secret of Mana being the pinnacle of action RPGs on the Super Nintendo, I've only played the remake. I love the remake, but I hear that the original is a hundred times better, so I'm really looking forward to playing that one. It's the same with Trials of Mana. I've only played the remake, but I hear the original is perfection, so it's going to be nice to give it a shot. And to finish off, I'll be suffering with Dawn of Mana, a game that I've never been able to bring myself to finish. If those reviews are something you're interested in seeing my take on, hit that subscribe button. I have been kind of slacking on these, but I want to get back to my Tales reviews. I've done Fantasia, Destiny, and Eternia so far, and I've had a real blast doing this. It's been a huge blast from the past, reliving these experiences that I grew up playing. For 2024, I want to at least knock three Tales games off my review backlog. Those three Tales games will be Symphonia, which I'm a good 20% through currently, I just need to get back to playing it, as well as Tales of the Abyss, which I haven't played since it came out on the PS2, so that's going to be nice. And then Tales of the Tempest. Tales of the Tempest is probably going to be a roast-a-thon. That game is not that great. It's like 11 hours long. It's, it's going to be fun. With all honesty, I will probably end up doing more than just these three, but for the goal, with all the other games I have planned, this is what I want to get done. Okay, so that's it for planned reviews at this point in time. However, if you're interested in anything more on this list, please let me know. As for the next game I want to play, it's several games. I want to catch up on the Yakuza series. But Shinky, Yakuza games aren't JRPGs. How dare you play games that aren't JRPGs? Really, I respectfully disagree. They have all the determining factors of JRPGs. Level up system? Check. In-depth and emotional story? Check. Side quests? Check. Super cool hero character that all the ladies want to get with? Check. If you may recall, in my top 10 games announced to come out in 2024 video, I mentioned that I was considering turning 2024 into Shinky's Year of Yakuza. Well, that has already started. I finished Yakuza Kiwami 2 earlier in the year, and I absolutely loved it. To catch up, I still have to play through Yakuza 3, Yakuza 4, Yakuza 5, Yakuza 6, Like a Dragon, Like a Dragon the Man Who Erased His Name, and the upcoming Infinite Wealth. It's definitely going to be a time sink, and yes, the whole reason I want to do this is because I want to play Yakuza 7, as I've heard nothing but good things about it. 
I've heard from a lot of people that you don't need to play the entirety of the Yakuza series to understand the story for Seven, but I'm one that wants to know all the lore, all the story, and all the adventures up to this point. That, and I have a friend that's been pushing me to play Yakuza for years. With infinite wealth looking incredibly amazing, this is the perfect chance to catch up. Who knows, maybe I'll throw that into the review queue. Is that something you might be interested in seeing me cover? I know they're not typical JRPGs, but please let me know. I wasn't intending on it, but if there's enough interest... Now we have Amori. Amori looks like an interesting game. Normally I'm not into RPGs that look as if they were built in RPG Maker, but the whole presence of this game really grabs me. Like, I like the idea of a psychological horror JRPG. A game that messes with your head while giving a heartfelt story. I'm sold. The only issue I've seen is that it deals with a lot of mental health concerns, so it might be a bit intense. I'm sure I'll be able to handle it though. I bought this game last year, and I've wanted to play it for a while, so this year I'm going to dive into it. Can you think of any other horror JRPGs? The only ones that come to mind are the Shadowheart series, which I still need to play before Penny Blood comes out, and maybe Parasite Eve. Let me know some of the best horror JRPGs you've played. Next is Star Ocean Second Story R. I'm just as surprised as you are that I didn't binge this game like crazy when it came out. It was one of my favorite RPGs growing up. Truth be told, I recently played through the original Star Ocean 2 on PS1 in 2022, so I didn't want to jump into the remaster slash remake of this right away. I do want to play it at some point this year. Star Ocean 2 is one of my favorite games, honestly, and I'm looking forward to enjoying it with a new coat of paint. Also, say what you will, but Dia Supremacy, there's no arguing that. Any suggestions what party members I should choose for this run? I usually end up going Rena's route with Claude, Rena, Diaz, and Ashton. Might be nice to change it up this time around. What do you think? Should I go with my regular party or shuffle it around? Next on this list is Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Yeah, this game is sitting in my backlog and I've had it since launch day. So when Xenoblade Chronicles 3 came out initially, I had just played through Xenoblade Chronicles 1 Definitive Edition and 2 back to back and I was a bit burnt out on the series. So it was pushed into the backlog until I was ready to do another whole Xenoblade title. As they are quite the commitment, they are very long games. Now I have the DLC as well for this game and I hear it's phenomenal, but I also haven't played through Torn of the Golden Country DLC from Xenoblade 2. I'm not sure if that should be played before Xenoblade 3. This might be a bit more of a bite than I thought it was. Oh well. I've heard Xenoblade 3 is another one of those amazing JRPGs that needs to be played. It's definitely going to be played at some point this year. I'm going to be experiencing emotions again, aren't I? Near Automata. Back in 2022, I had this plan to play through both Near Replicant and Near Automata back to back. Now, I don't know if you've played Near Replicant, but that game is very depressing. I won't go into details due to spoilers, but to put it in gentle terms, it was like Yoko Taro himself rushed into my home, ripped out my heart, and crushed it as if it was a Mortal Kombat fatality. Near Replicant is one of the most heartfelt and depressing RPGs I have played to this date. Anyways, outside of that graphic imagery, I just wasn't ready to jump into another Nier title yet. But as it's been several years, now I think I'm ready to give the second Nier title another shot. Another reason I want to play Nier Automata is because Tubi is everywhere. And I have no idea on the background of this character and what she's all about. It feels like every time I turn around, there's Tubi. She's everywhere. Tubi is like the Troy Baker of video game cameos. And what makes it worse is supposedly all of these cameos, be it Final Fantasy XIV, Star Ocean Anamnesis, Rainbow Six Siege, or Soul Calibur VI, according to Yoko Taro, they are all canonical to the story of Nier. I don't understand why, but Yoko Taro gonna Yoko Taro, I guess. Everyone also talks this game up, so hey, it's worth playing in 2024, right? Master Detective Archives Raincode is another one of those games that I was incredibly excited for, 
but I never ended up playing. I have no reason why. I probably just got distracted by something else coming out around that same time. This happens a lot. Sometimes I have the focus of a goldfish. Oh well. Anyways, this game got my attention initially because Danganronpa. Danganronpa is one of, if not, my very favorite visual novel series of all time. As this game is also developed by several members of the Danganronpa team, of course I had to play it. Anyone else notice, though, that every single one of Kazutake Kodaka's games look almost identical? I know it's the same artist, but it's just hard to not make that comparison. Oh well, give me another murder mystery. I love murder mysteries. Definitely one of my top five favorite story archetypes. We're into the anime section of my 2024 gaming bucket list. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is another one of those games that I've been putting off for ages. I enjoyed Dragon Ball Z, but I haven't sat down and watched the entire series. I remember catching an episode or two growing up, and I really enjoyed the characters, more specifically the villains. Now, I hear that Kakarot follows the anime almost to the letter, and that's what one of the biggest complaints around its release was. It wasn't an original story, and it was a retelling of the same story that everyone has already heard in multiple games. I understand those complaints, however, for me, that sounds honestly great. For someone who doesn't really watch anime and plays video games more than anything, this sounds like the perfect way to get the anime experience while playing an RPG. The gameplay itself looks like a solid action RPG, so I'll probably enjoy it. Side note, the second season pass DLC for this game is incredibly overpriced. It came out over a year ago, and everything since then has been released for it, but it's never gone on sale. I'm sorry Namco, but there's no way I'm paying $55 for that. It has to go on sale at some point, right? Right? Digimon Story, Cyber Sleuth, and Hacker's Memory. Digging deep into my backlog for these ones, I adore Digimon. I'd even rank it higher than Pokemon personally. I've played a bit of Cyber Sleuth, and it's incredible from what I've experienced thus far. Monster collecting and monster raising games are a weakness of mine. Also, having grown up with Digimon, there's also that nostalgia factor. The idea that you can constantly evolve and devolve monsters based on stats to get your perfect team sounds like the most addicting gameplay loop, and I know that once I really get into the game, it's going to be something that I don't ever want to stop playing. I don't know much about Hacker's Memory, but I've heard it's more of the same, but with a branched off storyline. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Kind of like Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. I also hear that this game is a heavy time sink. With all the grinding that's necessary to build up your perfect team, it isn't uncommon to hit 100 plus hours on a playthrough. Oh, I'm so ready, bring it on. More monster collecting! Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince, or Dragon Quest Monsters 3, is another game I just didn't have time to play last year. It came out in the tail end of 2023, and with December being incredibly busy for me, I couldn't find the time to just sit down and enjoy it. Another one of those games that shocks me that I didn't drop everything to play it. I love Dragon Quest. I've said this many times before, and the monster games especially are fantastic spin-offs. This game is sort of a prequel to Dragon Quest IV, featuring the main villain Sorrow. I like Sorrow. He was one of the more memorable Dragon Quest villains to me, so I'm looking forward to this look into his personality. Also, I just love the Dragon Quest monster designs. They're always so cute and colorful. Even the supposedly scarier undead ones. They're adorable and I'm all for that. Yeah, that's a lot of games. Am I going to finish every single one of them? Probably not, but I am definitely going to do my best. I mentioned earlier that there are some games coming out this year that I'm interested in playing that I did not add to this list. Just off the top of my head, a few of those are Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Persona 3 Reloaded, A Yudin Chronicle, Visions of Mana, and Saga Emerald Beyond. What games are you looking forward to playing in 2024? Upcoming or out of your backlog? Let me know in the comments below and if you want to join me on my 2024 journey for thoughts and reviews, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notifications so you can see when my videos go live. Anyways, thank you for watching, I appreciate you all, and as always, have a wonderful day.